I recently, this sounds a bit stupid, but like started doing yoga. What's your go-to? I think it's like a frog something. You like, you balance on your hands like over. It's quite cool. It's quite oh, hard. Boy. There's no way I could do that. No. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I like the challenge happen. though. Well, I think this is shaping up to be a fun conversation. Joining us over the Zoom right now is Nina Nesbitt. Hello. Hello, how are you? I am fantastic, thanks. My name is Waters. It's great to meet you. I'm also joined by my co-host, Callista. Say hi. Hey, Nina. Hi. So you've got an album that you're getting ready to drop. It's called Alscar. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It means love in Swedish. And uh, fun fact about me, I actually speak a little Norwegian, so I didn't even need Google Translate for that. Ah, oh, so, I love uh, that. <laughs> it's quite similar, isn't it? It is. It's very similar. Yeah, it would be Elskar in Norwegian. So, oh, nice. It, when people think about Sweden, they either think one of two things meatballs from IKEA or ABBA. Is this you getting into your ABBA era? Because I know it's not you getting into your meatball era. I have always been in my ABBA era ever since I was a kid. I used to actually, because I have a Swedish mum. I grew up with ABBA and I used to just sing The Winner Takes It All about 15 times a day. It was really bad, but i um, always been a huge fan. Lucky to be uh, brought up on that. And uh, yeah, definitely still in my ABBA era. <laughs> but now you can sing your own for who knows how many times a day. And the music video for Pressure Makes Diamonds, that one's got chaotic energy for sure. So what was it like shooting that and how much of it was just like random things that you did in the moment? Uh, a lot of it was random. Kind of just turned up with different characters and then we were like, okay, let's just put the track on and see what happens. But yeah, it's kind of just like a tongue in cheek, fun take on like being a woman and like any insecurities that I have, we were like, okay, let's make them fashion. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's embrace them um so yeah that one was is quite uh chaotic as you say but um yeah it was probably the most I've laughed all year I couldn't help but notice though the lyrics in Pressure Makes Diamonds very jaded is there a part of you at all that's kind of fed up with the industry just over it all I wouldn't say over it all I think it's just like obviously like it's not the easiest industry to be in but it's I think you can like take that and and use it as fuel to like you know fuel you on more um, and turn it into a positive thing I think it's more just like tongue-in-cheek like having a laugh about it than complaining well you do a lot of Q&A videos on your YouTube channel so how often are you like engaging with fans all the time I mean there's so many social medias that you have to be on now so I feel like yeah. whatever one I'm on I'm chatting to people um and yeah it's nice it's nice to kind of get an idea of who's listening what, what would you say is the best and the worst parts about being so accessible though? The best part is that, you know, you have such a close relationship, you know what they're into, what they're not into. Um, and it's nice that people can kind of like grow with you and your music. I guess the worst part is that there's so many apps to be on these days and it's like, I just want to write some songs now. <laughs> so I totally yeah, get that. <laughs> it can be a bit full on for everyone, I think. And for you specifically, the creative promo has gone way beyond just the apps too. Like you've been doing this thing where you drive to meet fans and play them unreleased music. I feel like, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that scary at all? Like, how did you even come to the idea that you should do that? To be honest, like I was getting a bit bored of these live stream things that you do on like, you know, people oh go live on TikTok. It's like, everyone's been doing that because gigs weren't allowed to happen what can we do that's like different that kind of gives a preview um and I recently started driving and I was like oh, I love listening to music in my car how cool would it be if someone could just hop in and have a listen so yeah we just did it I vetted them all on social media first so I was like this person hopefully isn't a weirdo <laughs> so um, you know they're not total creepers yeah <laughs> yeah it was mainly just like girls my age um so hopefully quite safe there <laughs> Yeah, I like that in 2022, we're taking all the old rules and just throwing them out the window. Don't talk to strangers. Don't get into a car with strangers. I know, everyone was like, why are you like getting in a car with strangers? But I just think like, you know, people are people are chilled. It was great. You, you actually have a song called No Time For My Life To Suck, which totally relate, totally relate. So what do you do when the going gets tough? 
I recently this sounds a bit stupid but like started doing yoga and um I feel like it just really calms me like doing some form of exercise going on a walk like it's so simple but it just kind of resets your Mm. brain in a way um or just you know thinking like what writing down what's stressing me out okay do I want this person in my life do do I have control over this situation no get rid of it try and stop stressing if you can't change it or control it at the time then have to just learn to try and forget about it you're almost like almost being your own therapist in that I am I do a lot of (laughs) self-therapy no kidding yeah I've been thinking about you know getting into some yoga myself lately like the only one that I can do is the tree pose because that's all I have balance for what's your go-to I think it's like a frog something you like you balance on your hands like over it's quite cool it's quite hard there's no way I could do that no (laughs) I can't do it (laughs) I like the challenge though. Now, I want to ask this question before Callista can, because usually she brings it up. So I want to swoop in and point out that Taylor Swift was a huge inspiration for you early on. Callista's our designated resident Swifty. She's showing off her merch right now, actually. And uh, so I wanted to ask, since Taylor was there for you at the beginning, obviously Taylor is still inspiring people. Does she inspire you with your new music in different new ways? Like, does she still do that? I think she'll always inspire me. Like, just it's just her style of writing. Like, I think I grew up on, you know, super pop music, really. Um, whereas a lot of, like, you know, female pop stars dancing to songs and stuff. And then when I heard her music, I was like, oh, this is like a diary. You know, it's that storytelling. And I think that's something that I'll always kind of take into my music. And it's just the way that I write now, I guess, because of listening to her. And then listening to like her inspiration. So yeah, I think definitely, yeah, for sure. Well, Taylor's got a song called Marjorie about her grandma. And now you've got a song about your grandma called Dinner Table. Um, it's also about three generations of women just sitting around a table, different generations being able to kind of like relate to the same situation. So is there a certain situation that kind of stood out to you? that you could relate to that your grandma and your mom went through I think just chatting about when we were younger and basically my gran doesn't speak much English and I don't Mm. speak full Swedish like I've been learning during lockdown because we have quite limited communication and since I've been learning Swedish a bit more I can understand what she's saying now so um, I feel like I've been talking to her for the first time in a way and just getting to hear about you know all her dating stories when she was younger and she just doesn't take any like crap from anyone which I love she's just like she's just an icon and I'm like okay I want to be like you (laughs) I think we're both quite savage um and you know she only wears black I love to wear black she bleaches her hair it's just like moments like that where you're like okay we're actually quite similar it's that kind of nature nurture thing that's really interesting yeah I think everyone's got something like some similarities to their family in a way that they might not even know. Now, as we look ahead, September 2nd, I believe, is the release date for Al Star. So that's when your album drops. Yep. Uh, Lead single, Pressure Makes Diamonds. Check that out, et cetera, et cetera. Give us a little hint about what to expect when the full album comes out, if you want to. I mean, I guess we could do no spoilers, but if you want to share, maybe like what's three words that would describe this record? Lyrical. Mm-hmm. storytelling and what's the word mm, I don't want to say sassy because I don't like that word but it's that kind of energy confidence kind of motivational go for that <laughs> okay okay <laughs> yeah great well I'm looking forward to hearing it I know uh, I speak on behalf of my co-host with that one mm-hmm. as well And uh, we both want to thank you a lot for your time, Nina. It's been great to chat with you. Thank you. Thanks so much.